This video is the second part to a series about building a function generator. If you haven't yet seen the first part, I recommend that you do so. It contains all the information about how we designed what we have currently. It's linked in the description if you are curious. As a quick summary, the first part covers using a microcontroller and a DAC to generate an output waveform. In this video, we'll make the waveform centered around zero volts and allow the user to alter the amplitude. Anyways, let's get the video started. Let's start with generating a negative voltage to make our bipolar supply. There are several ways to do so, but to keep things simple, I'll simply divide the supply voltage in half. Let's say that the input voltage is this 24 volt DC adapter. If we want to turn our 24 volts into plus and minus 12 volts, then we need to find a way to get a voltage that is in the middle. If you don't know what I mean, let me explain it. Voltage is simply a difference in the potential between two points meaning that it is relative. Take, for example, if you use your multimeter to measure a 9 volt source, but you switch the leads around, you will then get a negative voltage of negative 9 volts. The same concept applies to our case. If we have three different voltage points, 0 volts, 12 volts, and 24 volts, you can rearrange the point of reference. Instead of saying that the bottom here is 0 volts, we can instead say that the middle is 0 volts. That means the bottom is now negative 12 volts, the middle is ground, and the top is 12 volts. This new ground that we just created can be called a virtual ground. Just remember this, voltage is relative. Anyways, we just need a way to generate that 12 volts from the 24 volts that we currently have. The simplest method, which some of you might have already come up with, is a simple voltage divider. And yes, this technically works, but a problem arises when we place a load onto the circuit because Ohm's law is modified. So, to keep the voltage stable, we can use an output buffer. We can make such a buffer by using an op amp in a transistor. Remember that op amps will try to keep their inputs equal. So the op amp will drive the transistor to match the voltage of the resistor divider. If you want to learn more about how this op amp circuit works, feel free to check out my previous video on op amps. So, I use an LM358 op amp and a 2N3904 NPN transistor and put them on the breadboard according to our schematic. That means that we can generate a stable 12 volt output, thus completing our bipolar supply. One improvement that can be made is replacing the resistor divider with a TLE2426, which I will be doing. Don't worry if you don't have one. This IC is basically a precision voltage divider that makes it extremely easy to get exactly half of the input voltage. If you don't have it and can't be bothered to buy it, just use the voltage divider that we just discussed. It should work just fine for this application and it really won't matter that much. One more power supply consideration to make. We need a 5 volt source for the microcontroller. Since it doesn't use much current, I simply use an LM317 linear regulator. I have a million of them anyway. If you are confused and want to learn more about the LM317, you can check out my previous video which goes into depth on how it works and how you can use it yourself. Anyways, this new 5 volt source is relative to the new virtual ground that we just created. Now that we have our positive and negative 12 volt supplies, we can start working on translating the 0 to 4 volt DC signal from the DAC to a negative 2 to 2 volt AC signal. For that, we can use a differential op amp to subtract 2 volts from the DAC signal. We can simply use the second op amp inside of the LM358 for this purpose. A quick rundown of differential op amps is that they return the difference between the two inputs. So if we constantly set the non-inverting input to 2 volts, the output will compare that to the inverting input. That means that if the inverting input is set to 4 volts, then the difference is 2 volts, which makes our peak. When the input is 0 volts, the difference is negative 2 volts, which is now our negative peak. So in other words, we simply offset the waveform by negative 2 volts to center it around ground. We can create this 2 volt reference by simply using a potentiometer as a voltage divider. Just adjust it to be centered around 0 volts. Anyways, by using this op amp and making the differential configuration, we now have an AC signal. Again, if you want to learn more about the differential configuration, or just op amps in general, please visit my previous video about op amps to figure out everything you want to know about them. Just one more thing involving analog for this project. We need to be able to alter the amplitude of the generated function, because 4 volts peak to peak isn't always enough. 
For that, we can use a PGA, otherwise known as a programmable gain amplifier. Since I don't have any dedicated ICs currently, we can make one ourselves. To understand how to make one, let's first consider a typical non-inverting amplifier. To increase the gain, we can change the bottom resistor. While this is great, how can we digitally control this? Well, that's where we can add switches. Basically, we can select from a variety of switches to select the bottom resistor. There are a few ways to do this, but we'll simply be using the transistors as our switches. This means that the microcontroller can select from 2 volts, 5 volts, and 11 volt peak outputs depending on what the user specifies. More advanced designs can even use more switches to get even more options. But this project already has a lot of parts to solder. I also added a couple more inputs. A potentiometer will determine the frequency of the waveform. The potentiometer simply is read by the ADC in free running mode, and pressing the button will save the current ADC value into the current waveform frequency. I also added a button which will rotate through the three PGA options that we discussed earlier. I then took a look at the LCD that I plan to use, and realized that the LCD is probably better in a smaller size, so I switched to the smaller 16x2 LCD. I rewrote a bit of code to fit the new LCD size and make it so that the user can select which value they want to monitor. With that being said, the code is finally complete for this project and only the hardware remains. For this project, I decided to make a PCB. I had already made a schematic while working on the breadboard version, so all I had to do was draw up the PCB. This project was a little more difficult than my other PCB projects since it had multiple supply voltages. I also added a little bit of 3D into the project, with the LCD hovering over some components. You'll see what I mean once I solder it together. And so after putting everything together on the computer, I ordered it and started to wait for it to arrive. And they arrived a couple weeks later, looking good. Anyways, it was time to solder them together. I started with the power supply portion, since I didn't want to accidentally fry anything if the supply voltages were wrong. Once I verified that they were working properly, it was time to solder together the rest of the board. Everything else was simple enough, but the LCD is what was different. To make sure that the LCD could fit above the other components, I put a few female headers to separate it. It really is quite satisfying. Anyways, with that being said, the project is now complete. There are a few glitches and noise issues, but those could be solved probably with a second version. Maybe I'll cover that in a future video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you make a function generator of your own, you certainly won't regret the convenience that it brings to your workbench. If you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing so that you can see my other videos. Have a good one!